Welcome back to Serving Up Simplicity. Today I'm going to share with you one of our favorite freezer meals. It's just a very simple spaghetti bake. And you may notice I do have an extra helper today. My daughter is helping me in and out the video. Short. Uh, she's got a short attention span though, so she's in and out throughout the video. And she helped me partially with the voiceover, but that didn't last long either. So to make this, you're going to need some ground turkey or ground beef. One yellow onion, spaghetti sauce, olive oil, diced red tomatoes with green chilies, garlic salt, Italian seasoning, crushed red pepper flakes, shredded cheese, and I did end up needing more than what I've got pictured here, so I ended up using uh, mozzarella, but then also some Colby Jack as well. And I forgot to picture it here, but I did use a container of sour cream as well and then of course some freezer tins or if you're going to be doing them uh, for individual lunches just some individual microwave safe containers start by adding olive oil to a heated skillet I did saute the onion for just a few minutes before I added my meat and then I finished cooking that all together I do add bell pepper sometimes too, but I just did not have any bell pepper when I done this. added garlic salt to my meat as I was cooking it. Sometimes I use minced garlic instead, but this time I just use garlic salt. After your meat gets finished cooking, go ahead and drain it, set it to the side. And I did add a little bit of olive oil to my pot before I added my angel hair in. And for spaghetti, we always use angel hair. It's just uh, thinner and uh, has really cooked quick time and uh, we just prefer it over spaghetti noodles but you can use either and I did show two boxes of angel hair um, for my ingredients because I had intentions on doing one complete box for um, my daughter's meals and then one complete box for our meals but we had um and this is something you always make sure you check when you're cooking your pasta we did end up having um, some weevils in one of the boxes of pasta and it was not out of date not even close to going out of date so um, just always make sure you pay attention to stuff like that when you're doing you know pasta flour anything check for weevils and stuff like that after my pasta was cooked I rinsed and drained it and then I did divide it up between our two bowls here and went ahead and added a little bit of butter to it just to kind of help it from sticking so much so the first bowl we're going to mix up and this is just one box of pasta that we've uh, kind of divided up some. She only likes pasta and sauce. She doesn't like any meat or anything extra in it. So hers is just going to be noodles and sauce. Spaghetti. Yummy. I did go ahead and cut her spaghetti up with a knife. It was just easier for her to put into the bowls that way. And of course, it'll be easier for her to eat it at school that way. That one's full. That one's perfect. That one's good. Oh, I'm going to put a little bit more in this one. That much? Okay. 
All right, so now we're gonna start on the spaghetti bake and just start by adding your spaghetti sauce. Can I eat this? Yeah. And I did have to take a break and uh, she couldn't wait to eat her spaghetti. She had to go ahead and have one container of it right then. I'm going to eat my spaghetti I made. Is that what you think you're going to need? What? That spoon. Uh-huh. For eating. What do you think, sucker? Did you just call me sucker? Yeah. That's not very sweet. I'm just kidding. Ooh, that looks good. Add one can of diced red tomatoes with green chilies. Add your cooked ground beef or cooked ground turkey. If you like it spicy, add red pepper flakes. Add Italian seasoning. Put salt in the spaghetti. Add pepper in the spaghetti. Add sour cream. Mix it up. Go ahead and add a little bit of shredded cheese in with your spaghetti mix and then we'll add some later on top as well before we freeze it. Mix up the spaghetti. And I did go ahead and make a pan of this for us to eat the same night that we cooked it. So like always, I do coat the bottom of my pan with spaghetti sauce and that's whether I'm cooking it right, right away or uh, later on when we do the freezer meals, you'll notice I coat the pans with spaghetti sauce then as well. After I got my spaghetti put in the pan, I did go ahead and add extra red pepper flakes and extra Italian seasoning. Like I said, I do like it spicy, so I added lots of uh, extra pepper flakes and Italian seasoning, but you don't have to add that again. And I ran out of mozzarella, so I did just go ahead and mix in some Colby Jack. Coat your pans with a spaghetti sauce. When I started filling the smallest pan, I didn't end up having quite enough 
spaghetti to uh, fill it up as thick as I like. So the other two were pretty full, so I just, just scoop out some uh, from the other two pans to make the smaller one full. And I do go ahead and add my cheese before I freeze the pans and it always turns out fine when I recook it. So just off one box of spaghetti, I was able to get uh, one meal that we ate that night, two large pans to put up, one small pan to put up, and she had three individual bowls. She had a fourth little rectangle bowl full. She ate that before we were even finished filming. So this is what we ended up with. For reheat instructions, if you reheat them completely frozen, you'll want to take these lids off, replace with tinfoil, kind of poof the tinfoil up so it doesn't stick to the cheese and bake it about 45 to 60 minutes frozen covered. Uncover it, check it, and if it's defrosted, if you can poke a fork through the center and it's defrosted, then you'll wanna remove the tinfoil and cook it an additional 20 minutes, maybe 30, just depending, but at least 20 minutes minimum till the cheese is melted and it's warmed through. And for the little individual meals that I done for my daughter's lunch, I freeze those. And then I just take those out and defrost those in the refrigerator um, the night before that I'm gonna pack them for her lunch. And then um, I remove the lids and heat them in the microwave for um, just a few minutes until defrosted. You know, just do it one to three minutes, just depending on your microwave and just kind of keep stirring them up throughout. And this is how it looks after it's been cooked and ready to eat and it's really good and sometimes I do add a little bit of extra sour cream on top when I'm serving it. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this video give us a thumbs up and if you're not subscribed hit that subscribe button at the end and that notification bell so you'll be notified the next time a video goes out.